Hey everybody, Tim Albrecht here and welcome to this week's episode of the Ask a YFP CFP segment of the Your Financial Pharmacist podcast where we feature questions from you, the YFP community, to be answered by one of YFP Planning's fee-only certified financial planners. Before we jump into today's question, I want to give a shout out to YFP Planning's incredible team that makes this segment possible. YFP Planning offers fee-only comprehensive financial planning services that are customized to the pharmacy professional. You can learn more and book a free discovery call by visiting yfpplanning.com. Again, that's yfpplanning.com. Okay, this week's question comes from Marissa in Bluffton, South Carolina. Hi, I'm Marissa from Bluffton, South Carolina. Our home has increased in value by over $100,000 since last year when we refinanced. We don't have any PMI. Is there any benefit to getting another appraisal to prove the equity that we've gained? Would it be wise to use the equity to pay off high interest debt like credit cards? Thank you, Marissa, for submitting your question to be featured on this week's Ask a YFP CFP segment of the Your Financial Pharmacist podcast. Tim Baker, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think just like most questions um, that are asked on on the segment, I'd probably be asking you know questions um, before giving an answer. So I, I think for me, Marissa, the first thing that I would ask is like, how much credit card are we talking? You know, credit card debt are we talking here? Is this you know something that we can pay off in a relatively short period of time? You know, just by maneuvering cash reserves, investments, or even you know kind of looking at you know cash flow and budgeting? Um, because I would say like. You know, when we talk about the baby steps of the financial plan, Tim, you know, the the consumer debt, the credit card debt is going to be one of the main first things that we look at. Mm -hmm. So, and again, I think part of this is also is like, is there a systemic reason why that credit card debt is there? Or is this kind of a one-off where, you know, we we had a bunch of travel or, or something that, you know, really kind of uh, allowed that credit card debt to accrue? You know, beyond that, once we kind of find, you know, figure out those answers and we, you know, feel good about kind of, um, potentially looking at debt options to uh, solve the issue versus something like cash or investments. In most cases, we're probably going to want to forego something like a second mortgage. Typically, you go um, and do a second mortgage if you want to make a major improvement to your house, like an addition or you know redo the kitchen or something like that. Um, you probably don't want to do a cash out refi just because you've already refinanced and your rates are higher than they were in the past. Um, we're, mm -hmm. we make that assumption. So probably the best approach, Tim would be the something, you know, considering something like a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. So this is a resolving source of, um, uh, revolving source of funds, much like a credit card that you can access, but it's actually collateralized by your house, which means that the house is the underlying asset which which makes the bank feel more comfortable to give you the money because if you don't pay it back, they can potentially put a lien on the house or even take the house. Um, so something like an uncollateralized um, debt would be something like a student you know, student loan debt or credit card mm -hmm. debt. So typically the HELOC is less risk, which means the rates are lower, but not necessarily as low as what you would get from when you refinance the property. So one of the things that you would have to look at is that does it make sense for the the there to be an appraisal which is what the question is do we need to have an appraisal right. to figure out what we have gained so in some cases yes in some cases no probably in this market yes um that would be probably the best thing to do um that allows that will allow you to determine like the value of the asset the house um but like i said sometimes a full appraisal is not required so it's going to be dependent on who you actually work with now a typical heloc will allow you to access 80%. Um, sometimes they go up as high as 90% of, of the equity. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. That means, Tim, if my house is worth um, half a million dollars, 500000 and my mortgage is 400000 that means I have $100,000 of equity in the house. Now, in most cases, I'll be allowed to access 80% of that 100000 or $80,000. So that's what I can basically take out and then you know use for, to pay down the high interest credit card debt. Um, the, the important thing to remember is that this, that the, the rate that is typically used is variable. So again, it's going to be more than what your, your mortgage insurance, you know, which a lot of people, it's a fixed rate, but it's also going to be variable, which we see, we've seen over the last months, even how that's ticked up over time. So there could be a little, a little bit of variability and an increased cost there. Now you're probably seeing increases across the board with all types of that, even, even things like credit cards. So you know, the one advantage of the HELOC is that 
you kind of um, you kind of pay on what you actually take out. So I don't have to take mm -hmm. out the full eighty thousand, which that's one of the disadvantages of the second mortgage. You kind of say like, "Hey, I have a fifty thousand dollar product." Pro uh, um, project, I need 50,000 and that's all I get. Whereas in a HELOC, you could take out 80,000 and leave that 30,000 to the side, like not take it, but then you could take, you know, another 10 all the way up to that 80,000. So you basically are paying much like a credit, a credit card, you're paying on the debt that you've actually taken. Now there are going to be things like annual fees and inactivity charges. There are going to be closing fees. Like when you actually do it, it should be a lot less than a typical mortgage. Um, some providers waive closing costs, but that probably means they're just going to be charging you more interest because we know, uh, you know, no free lunch. So there's lots of things that go into this. I would say given, you know, Marissa, your scenario, um, the first thing I would say, is this even necessary? Are there things that we can do in the short term? Um, even, even something as simple as, you know, a zero interest credit card deal, which isn't That's necessarily, is going, Tim. yeah, yeah which ideal, isn't necessary. But... Right. It's not necessarily that to me, it's a band aid, but it does it allow you to give you some breathing room even before you go down the path of paying down cash reserves, mm -hmm. taking money out of the, the market because we know investments are depressed right now. Um, but even going down these, you know, options of, of debt. So I think the big thing is, is like, what's the credit card? um that look like what's your what's your burn rate you know are there ways are there ways for us to kind of work through this before we kind of even get into the the HELOC discussion Tim I love the way you approach this question because I think it's another great example of the creativity that can come we're just talking about a tiny slice right of the financial plan although an important one obviously as it relates to this question but you know the creativity that can come from a lot of options that are out there but first before we've been to those options like what's going on? You know, you mentioned the burn rate, you know, is this a one-time thing it's done? Is this, you know, we're anticipating other debt in the future. And I thought you highlighted so well, the, the HELOC and, you know, think about all the costs, right? You're transferring one rate for another rate, ideally a lower rate. Uh, but you mentioned, you know, closing costs could be application fees, could be an activity fees, you know, so, so there's certainly some advantages there, but also costs that need to be considered along the way as well, but lots of different ways to, to approach it. But I, I love the, um, approaching this in terms of like, what's going on? Like, let, let's kind of figure out what, what's behind the scenes. What's the story? What's the amount? Are there other options we're not thinking about? Uh, and then we can, you know, plug a solution accordingly. So yeah, absolutely. great stuff. And Marissa really appreciate, uh, the, the question, not sure that we've answered a question like this specifically with the angle. And I think for many where they're seeing appreciation in their, in their homes, certainly over the last couple of years, I'm guessing folks are, are looking at that equity growing and wondering, you know, what opportunities might be there. So Marissa, thanks for taking time to submit the question. As a small thank you, we're going to be sending you a super comfy YFP t-shirt, and we would love to take questions from others that are listening to the show. If you have a question you'd like us to answer, two ways that you can submit your question. One, you can email us info at yourfinancialpharmacist.com, or you can record your question directly by visiting yourfinancialpharmacist.com forward slash askyfp. As we wrap up this week's Ask a YFP CFP episode, an important reminder that the content in this podcast is provided for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to provide and should not be relied on for investment or any other advice. For more information on this, you can visit yourfinancialpharmacist.com forward slash disclaimer. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great rest of your week.